today I thought it's maybe a pretty good idea just to tell a little bit more about our mid-size Jet Learjet 60XR. Then we check the fire detector and we are going to see all that lights. A lot of people ask the basic question like is it difficult to fly? For me it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Today I thought it's maybe a pretty good idea just to tell a little bit more about our mid-size Jet Learjet 60XR. The first flight of this type was somewhere around 1990s and the uh, last one built was in 2014 I think, so a little bit more than 400 of those were protected by Bombardier Aerospace. It's capable of carrying 7 passengers, depending on the configuration, up to 2200 miles actually with 4 passengers. I think 2000 miles is more a uh, real number because it's really not comfortable to fly more than 4 hours so I did 5 hour flights, it was really long and uh, not comfortable for passengers and for the crew. The maximum operating altitude is, is 51,000 feet but we don't fly that high and actually I never flew higher than 43,000 feet on this one due to several reasons. Normal speed is 7.6, 7.8 Mach, it's not that fast as uh, modern business jet fly and even the modern commercial jets but it's a good airplane and let me show you a little bit more of um, controls that you have in the cockpit and the equipment a lot of people ask the basic question like is it difficult to fly it for me it's the hardest thing i've ever done in my life because actually it's not about flying the plane i mean everybody else can land a plane that's not the hardest thing the hardest thing is to know all the things that you should know to be, to be able to land the place safely and to be able to know what to do in case of an emergency and to be calm. That's the most difficult thing because I really think that when you have an emergency or you have a problem, like you need to control yourself a lot. And especially for me, I'm a woman, so I'm a girl. What can we do? You know, we are like the, you know, the Tasman ta how do you call that uh, Tasmanian devil mm -hmm. so we are kind of like that and for me it's very difficult to control myself so you have to learn that like slowly and it's really really tough so that's the cockpit of uh, my layer 60 and let's talk simple about complicated things that we have over here so over here on the left we have the circuit breakers panel then on, on the left over here we have the light controls, we have avionic master that turns on our avionic. Right now they are on. This communication panel, we can control the volume of our communication with ATC. The two screens, the left one is a PFD, primary flight display. The right one is called multifunction display. We have different system information over there that we can bring up over there. And we have more navigation information over there. Down there we have electrical panel where we can control batteries, emergency batteries, inverters, we start engines. So down here we have engine panel. Each engine has the FADIC with two channels. Normally it's in auto position or we can manually change it to A or B depending on the situation. Then we have ignition switches, then we have anti-ice uh, panel so we control all our anti-ice uh, equipment. Then we have airplane light, cabin altitude indicator, then we have a hydraulic pressure indication, gear and air, brake air, presentation control panel. So down here is a pedestal with the spoilers, thrust levers, flaps, parking brake. Further down we have FMSs, the second radio tuning unit and the fuel control panel. So, um, yeah, I think what you talk about is just about the good airmanship because yeah. basically even the animal can uh, ride the bicycle in the circus, right? Yeah. But yeah. in order to make the right decisions, that's that's what, the most that's what it's all about. Thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the good airmanship because yeah. basically you can you can learn all the numbers, all the limitations, and everything. That's easy. I mean, that's something that it's you know there is a book. You have to know all the limitations from the book. They are just numbers. And that's it. Yeah, but and just find and just to remember how the systems operate and uh, exactly. But the difficult, actually, it's a lot of you know theory and things that you should know, and not everybody else knows. I tell you, there are many pilots who have no fucking freaking idea, and they are flying. So, for me, it's something like you've got a lot of responsibility when you are flying a plane. 
not me. That's why I'm the co-pilot. I'm just doing what the captain says, but you've got a lot of responsibility and you need to know how to act. And that's the most complicated thing for me, at least. That's why I'm saying, before I was saying, no, it's easy to fly the plane, but I was flying a Cessna. Come on, <laughs> everybody else can fly a Cessna. Even I can teach my dog how to fly the Cessna. Well, you know, after flying the jets, from time to time I go flying and fly Cessna and I tell you it's it's difficult to fly Cessna after flying the jet airplane because it's it's really different yeah you tell you it's really different well I haven't tried yet they it, told me like two days ago if I wanted to go back to the flight school and I said no thank you yeah, <laughs> okay right side right is clear number two on and uh, it's all yours so now we have to do all the checks the pre-flight checks and what we are going to do first is we are going to check the rotary wheel so we check gear horn and we stop it with the mute over here and a second time with this one then we check the fire detector and we are going to see all that lights coming up Over speed, we will hear, we will listen to the horn for three times. <coughs> then cabin altitude, we will get the warning over here, the master and the alarm. Left stall, angle of attack increasing. When it's coming to the yellow range, it will shake and we will get the warning and the other one. And right stall, same again, angle of attack increasing. In the yellow range, shaking, warning, and the light. Then MAC trim, we will check here. It's coming up and we will get MAC trim and pitch trim. Trim over speed. We have to trim it to the nose up position. We go to the terrain awareness warning system. Oh, it's your favorite one. Yeah. Light slow. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Well, we can check now the TICAS. Okay. And we get the four different signs over here. Vertical speed. Traffic. Okay. Yeah, so the trims are left and the fuel panel checks. Yeah. Okay, so the, okay, so the fuel system checks are left. Yeah, we have to check all the pumps. Okay. So it's done. So that's basically it for now. And then we will start the second engine and then we will continue with the checks, right? Rudder boost is working. Thank you.
123, clear for takeoff. When I think about the fighter jets, I never think that they're that big, but this Phantom is, is bigger than Lyric 60 actually, and it looks so nice. It can fly up to 18,300 meters, so it's into the space, and the maximum speed is 2.2 mark. It's 2,370 kilometers per hour. Sounds like very fast, actually. The painting is so nice. <laughs> 